Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So the 26th of January was Australia Day, an annual public holiday to celebrate all things Aussie. It's a day characterised by barbecues, tennis, cricket, trips to the pool and the beach, and as well as that quintessentially Aussie spirit of, she'll be right mate. What would you say to other kids who were thinking of partying when their parents are out of town? Get me to do it for you. Squeeze me? Oh no. Get you to do it for you. Not don't do yes. it. Nah, get me to do it for you. Best party ever so far, that's what everyone's been saying, so... Despite its charming traditions, the origins of Australia have coined a lot of controversy over the years, especially in our current era of identity politics and Marxist resurgence. Now, for all you foreigners out there, Australia Day is held on January 26th every year to commemorate the arrival of the first fleet of British settlers to Port Jackson, New South Wales, and the raising of the flag of Great Britain at Sydney Cove by Governor Arthur Phillips. So, in other words, the day is one of the markers of British colonialism of Australia, which activists largely on the left consistently remind us. And look, understandably so. I mean, the indigenous Australians did not have a very nice time at the hands of the early settlers for the most part, to say the least. However, after 230-ish years of social progression and civil rights advances, I would like to think that we as a nation could move beyond the day's perceivably contentious beginnings and use it as a day to celebrate our wonderfully rich society of people from all corners of the globe. Wouldn't that be nice? Nevertheless, these largely left-wing activists persist every year in screaming that we should hashtag change the date. And I call it screaming because it has gone far beyond the realms of just sensible debate and political rallies. Nicknames such as Survival Day and Invasion Day have sprung up over the last couple of years, pushed largely by white progressives to signal what good hashtag allies they are to Indigenous Australians, and some local councils even refuse to hold citizenship ceremonies ceremonies on Australia Day, which is of course the most popular day to hold them. Also infamously, in 2017, radio station Triple J moved its hottest 100 countdown, an iconic fixture of Australia Day, to January 27th instead of the 26th as a show of solidarity to Indigenous Australians. Too bad January 27th is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, but hey, the Triple J peeps feel good about themselves and that's all that really matters. Don't you love it when people try to be woke and then just end up stepping on themselves? <laughs> In this way, the left in Australia is attempting to look I don't know whether it's to ignore history or erase history, but either way, there is some serious denial going on about Australia's past, both the good and the bad. They also attempt this kind of history sanitization with their attempts to either remove or deface monuments to historical figures such as Captain Cook, Arthur Phillip, Governor Macquarie, and all of the other British explorers who helped inaugurate modern Australia. As if shielding the public from reminders of the past will somehow miraculously undo it. The same is true in the USA with the constant pushing to remove Confederate statues, flags, and monuments. Now, the history and politics of Confederate symbols is very complex. On the one hand, you can argue that they are symbols of racism and oppression, the remnants of the reverence of slavery. And on the other hand, you can argue that the Civil War was about more than just slavery, and that many good men fought and died to protect their families from what they perceived as an invasion from the North. Now, remember, the majority of Confederate soldiers weren't actually slave owners. These were not rich men. They were fighting a war that they may or may not have believed in, with their first and foremost purpose being to preserve the lives of their loved ones. Slave ownership would have been the last thing on the minds of those men and their families. It's a tale as old as time. Wars are the battles of the rich fought by the poor. As such, you could argue that their suffering should be acknowledged and their sacrifice to their homes and families respected, rather than, you know, tearing down monuments and demonizing them as the oppressors when they didn't actually have any kind of stake in slavery itself. Statues and Confederate flags aside, war monuments specifically are about people, not ideology. But then again, the argument continues. 
It's important to remember that the vast majority of Confederate commemorative stuff didn't go up straight after the Civil War ended in 1865. That was when memorials to wounded and dead soldiers were erected to acknowledge their suffering and sacrifice. Statues of Confederate generals like Robert E. Lee, however, primarily started being constructed decades later, with a huge spike in Confederate symbol creation between about 1890 and 1920, according to the Southern Southern Poverty Law Center, which eerily enough coincided with the instigation of the Jim Crow laws, that is, state and local laws that enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. As such, you could argue that the erection of these monuments through that specific time period was to express resistance to black American civil rights advances not as a commemoration of Southern heritage or soldiers. The same could be said of the Confederate flag, considering it had a bit of a resurgence in the mid-20th century throughout the Civil Rights Movement. Now, since this was a time of much needed social progression for black people in America, it would seem a bit of a contradiction in terms that a symbol that represents a group of people who wish to keep black people enslaved popped up at the same time, unless it was a way for those who opposed equality between blacks and whites to express their feelings on the matter. Side note, I am fully aware that I am giving a very, very basic rundown of American history here, so please don't sue me if I'm skimming stuff or if I'm representing things in a way that you don't agree with. It is a complicated topic, it's very, very involved, and I can't make like a five hour video on it because you would all get bored. But please have it out in the comments section, I would love to hear from you. Anyway, long story short, and like I said before, the history and politics of Confederate statues, monuments, and the flag is very complex, much more complex than the erecting of statues to early British colonizers in Australia. That is an ideological cakewalk compared to the ideological cesspool that is the putting up slash tearing down of Confederate stuff. Holy wow. So what do we do with it all? Should statues of Captain Cook and Arthur Phillip and General Lee be torn down lest they offend the eyes and delicate sensibilities of innocent passers-by? Do we change the date of Australia Day because January 26th is always going to be tarnished by the sins of our Anglo ancestors? Well, to answer that question, you have to ask another question. How would that help? How would changing dates or removing statues actually help racial minorities in Australia and the USA? Certainly in Australia, a lot of indigenous communities have much, much bigger problems than a date or the presence of a statue. Indigenous children have a school attendance rate of about 10% lower than non-indigenous kids, which is setting them back right from the get-go. Fatherlessness is also a massive problem, as is alcoholism and, tr and drug addiction. Indigenous women are 34 to 80 times more likely to be victims of DV, and according to a study by the Australian Institute of Criminology in 2019, both Indigenous men and women are overrepresented in nationwide DV statistics. Even the life expectancy of Indigenous people in Australia is lower. The life expectancy gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous males is 8.6 years and 7.8 years between Indigenous and non-Indigenous females. So I ask you, how on earth is changing a date or removing a statue or two going to help all of that? It's not. No! 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 And of course it's not. This silly push to change dates and hide history by the left is simply a distraction from the actual terrible problems facing some indigenous communities. It's a way of making leftists feel better about themselves while not risking being called racist for pointing out the disproportionate problems that I have just mentioned that afflict indigenous people. In the case of white leftists, they get to smile and go to rallies and be good little social media activists without having to actually go out on a limb and admit there are more serious problems at hand. In fact, it's its own form of bigotry, the bigotry of low expectations. It's as if these white leftists think we shouldn't actually expect anything better from indigenous communities. It's like they feel indigenous people should be coddled rather than motivated, and anyone who says otherwise is apparently a disgusting racist. Oh, the projection is strong with that group, let me tell you. The only thing changing the date of Australia Day affects is people's feelings, and a minority of people at that. 
most Australians actually don't want the date changed. Poll after poll has come out every year for the last several years to indicate that a large majority of Aussies this year, according to the Institute for Public Affairs, it's 71%, want Australia Day to be celebrated on January 26th. There is not what you would call a huge societal demand to change the date, despite what the mainstream media and social media activists would have you believe. The other issue with this left-wing campaign of the condoned vandalism of statues is that you can't actually rewrite history, nor can you really judge people historically through the lens of today. Hiding monuments to periods of time that were, by today's modern Western standards, very much less than pleasant, does absolutely nothing other than keep it out of sight, out of mind for future generations. This is a bad thing, because we desperately need to continue to learn from history. If we don't learn from it, we are doomed to repeat it. Those Confederate slash British colonial statues are a stark but very necessary reminder of what not to do. While they may have been erected as a commemoration of values we no longer live by, that does not mean that today they are viewed in the same way. Very few people in Australia, for instance, would look at a monument to Arthur Phillip and think, gosh, what a good job he did with those early Aboriginals. That's absolutely how we should treat them nowadays. As for the USA, well, it's no wonder the left, and to be more specific, the Democrats, are so keen to get rid of Confederate memorabilia. They are playing historical catch-up. As we know, it was the Republicans, not the Democrats, who freed the slaves. The Democrats effectively ran the Confederacy and created the Confederate flag. The Southern Democrats instituted the Jim Crow laws and voted against just about every single piece of civil rights legislation from 1866 to 1966. That's a hundred years of voting against equality. This includes Democrats opposing the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which were the abolition of slavery, the granting of citizenship to slaves, and granting slaves the right to vote, respectively. They also created a certain militant supremacist group that is very fond of the Confederate flag, whose name is three letters rhyming with AAA, which I can't name specifically in this video because YouTube wouldn't like it, but you all know what I mean. Considering all of that, it is no wonder that Democrats have such a vested interest in hiding history. They are so keen on themselves as the allegedly anti-racist party that it just doesn't do to have all those nasty little reminders hanging around of just how horrid they were until only about 50 years ago. It's all very Soviet, isn't it? This kind of revision of history to make themselves look better. And in any case, if we do start moving statues we deem offensive in the USA and Australia, well, where do we stop? Do we tear down the pyramids because they were built by slaves? Do we destroy Roman monuments because Roman emperors and mobs persecuted Christians? Where do you draw the line? History is inherently bloody. History is inherently immoral. History is befouled with the stains of unimaginable horror and extraordinary evil. You can never underestimate the cruelty of human beings. We need constant reminders of just how bad things can get so we don't do it again. And trust me, we could do it again. Human nature doesn't change, only human knowledge does. And in the case of Australia Day, my hope is that we can bypass the divisive identity politics pushed by the left regarding its historical semantics and, as a nation, reclaim our history by acknowledging January 26th as a day to celebrate how flippin' great it actually is to live in Australia. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Thank you.